as followers of Jesus. We follow his example. Today's gospel story begins by saying Jesus began to show his disciples. He began to show his disciples. He had already been showing his disciples plenty. What had he been showing his disciples already in the gospel of Matthew especially? What did Jesus show his disciples? Oh, give me an answer. How to help one another? How to love one another? Thank you. What else? Even to love your enemies. What else? He showed people how to feed 5,000 with just a few loaves and a f bread and a couple of fish, right? Yeah. He showed his disciples eventually what the kingdom of God looks like. He showed his disciples what, how to bless people. The Sermon on the Mount. Uh, blessed are they. Uh, he showed people, he showed his disciples how to pray. When you pray, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven. He showed his disciples a lot in today's gospel text. It says he began to show his disciples. He had, already be, he had already begun to show his disciples before this, but there was something new. As we heard about last Sunday after Jesus has proclaimed the Messiah, something is new. And Jesus sets his face to Jerusalem where he shows his disciples that he must undergo great suffering and be crucified until he is raised on the third day. So he begins to show his disciples the cross. He begins to show his disciples the cross, and it's tough to look at, it's tough to consider, it's tough to think about. Peter says, God forbid it, Lord. We don't want anything to happen to you. We don't want anything to happen to you. We say that about all our loved ones, don't we? We don't any, want anything to happen to you. Jesus began to show his disciples the cross, and then he in, even invited them, take up your cross and follow me, which is where Carissa was, uh, the text about following, right? Following Jesus. Today's epistle reading from Romans chapter 12, Paul is unpacking or showing what it means to what we just heard Mr. Zangara say about loving one another. Or what we just heard that Mr. Isaac say about loving your enemies. Here is a 13 verses or so about love filled with about 24 to 30 commandments depending on how you, uh, how you read them. And they're all plural by the way, so it's all y'all. Let all y'all's love be genuine, it begins. And everything else is plural after that. They're also staccato, meaning boom, 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 boom. Meaning, here's one thing that this group might do, and here's another thing that this group might do, and as a whole, we do this together. In other words, doing all those things is what we celebrate, especially again next Sunday, God's work, our hands. Uh, after worship, if you want to sign a hand, if you didn't get a chance to sign a hand, uh, I got markers and I got more hands to be signed. And speaking of signing, we are also going to be signing a little bit of God's work our hands and showing people we love and care for them. Uh, those of you who can stick around and sign some St. Mark's stationery, we're going to be sending this stationery, these letters and notes, to the Texas-Louisiana Gulf Coast Synod of the ELCA. We're not going to send a note to all 111 congregations, but there are 111 in the Texas-Louisiana Gulf Coast Synod. But we're going to send a note to many of those who were impacted by Hurricane Harvey. Whether it be Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Houston, Texas, that worships about 32 on a Sunday, to First Taiwanese Lutheran Church, also in Houston, another small congregation, First Lutheran Church in Galveston, 150 people on a Sunday, Christ the King Lutheran Church in Houston, they worship about like St. Mark's does, about 250 to 300 or more on a Sunday. And Living Word Lutheran Church in Katy, Texas is the largest church in their synod. 650 people worship on a Sunday. There are more of the congregations than that, but that's just a small snippet that we'll be extending our thoughts and prayers and signatures to uh, this week. Uh, part of God's work, our hands part of reminding people that 
We are rejoicing with those who rejoice. We are weeping with those who are weeping. We are picking up the cross and carrying it, following the example of our Lord Jesus, even helping those carry the cross in places where they are. So there's a song. And so Priscilla, Robbie, give me a, I guess a B flat. There's a song that uh, reminds me of this hurricane storm that people went through. And in a few minutes, our prayers today will be praying for not only the people in that storm, but in other storms in Asia. Uh, Elvis Presley once upon a time introduced this song by saying, uh, help your brother along the road no matter where he starts, for the God that made you made them too, these men with broken hearts. And this song, written by Rogers and Hammerstein, goes something like this. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high, and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky with a sweet silver song of the lark. Whoops, I'm way out of the key there. Let's try that again. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high. And don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver sun. I can't do that. Gosh, I'm sorry, Priscilla. <laughs> I had it. That's not supposed to be funny. <laughs> Walk. Give me the walk on through the wind. Priscilla's going to play it with me. And if you know it, join with me. The song Rogers and Hammerstein or Elvis or the Righteous Brothers or Adele or, hey, people in the European soccer leagues sing it as well. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm, at the end of the storm is a golden sky, is a golden sky and the sweet, the sweet silver song of the lark. Walk on. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, walk on through the rain, for your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on, with hope in your heart, with hope in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. You'll never Remind those people in Texas and Lake Charles, Louisiana, <laughs> that they'll never walk alone, that, that we are carrying the cross with them, that, that our love for them is genuine, as St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 12. And not only that, but go on through all those verses that Tommy read a while ago. Tommy had a great voice to read these verses from because St. Paul, the writer of these verses, knew something about each one of these statements, about love what is genuine and hating what is evil, because Paul was originally Saul and he hated even Jesus and the Christians and he persecuted them. But his life was forever changed in the midst of Jesus and Jesus' love for him. He saw how Jesus did not repay him with evil, but repaid Saul with love and grace and forgiveness and mercy. And so his life was forever changed, and he changed his name to reflect that from Saul to Paul. He knew also what it was like to extend, as the verse says, extend hospitality to strangers. Paul relied on strangers and their hospitality wherever he went, wherever he traveled. And many times, Paul was beaten. 
Paul was, as he writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he was flogged 40 minus 1 lashes five times. It's the same thing that happened to Jesus. Flogged with a whip and chains made out of animal teeth on his back, enough to almost kill him, but not quite. He was put in prison, and he writes in 2 Corinthians 11 as well that he even had to go through perils of flood and shipwreck and disaster. He knew what it was like to be in the midst of flood, to be almost at death, to be persecuted for his faith. He knew then, therefore, when he said, do not repay anyone evil for evil, because evil only wins if that's what you do. It reminds me of a little story of a, of a little boy about two years old, and it was his birthday party, celebrating his birthday, and an, uh, another cousin of his was there, about a five or six-year-old little boy named Jason, and a little two-year-old boy's name was Will. And in the midst of the party, and uh, little Will is celebrating, he's unwrapped, his, uh, unwrapped his presents, and they start singing happy birthday to him, and he kind of starts dancing around, having fun like a two-year-old boy might. And he looks like a little s small Buddha with little stubby arms, and, and, you know, he's a round little boy. All of a sudden he's dancing and the big bully, so to speak, Will, five, six years old, Will comes up, I mean, Jason comes up and pushes Will down to the ground. He doesn't like Will getting all the attention. And you know what Will does? He gets up and he cries and his mommy hugs him and then he starts heading towards Jason. And all the grandparents and everybody else at the party are thinking, gosh, we got to get some help for this kid. We need to get a BB gun or get him in, in a, a kitty karate lessons or something. We need to have him learn how to defend himself from bullies like big old Jason. But all Will does is go up to Jason with little, his little stubby arms and Buddha body and give him a hug and puts his head on his chest. Do not repay evil for evil. We can learn from children, can't we? And then there's another aspect, as I mentioned, about hospitality to the strangers. We can even learn from disasters like Hurricane Harvey. For even the Mattress King extended, has extended hospitality to strangers, opening up all the Mattress King stores around the Texas area for refugees of the flood to come in and stay and sleep and rest. All you who are weary and heavy laden, come to me and I will give you a place to sleep, said the Mattress King, right? Actually, Jesus said that, but in church sometimes he's known as the Mattress King because Jesus is the king of our lives and sometimes people fall asleep during the sermons. <laughs> it continues on Paul's statements about how to live this Christian life and how difficult it is to live this Christian life. Do not be haughty associate with the lowly. In other words, be kind. A, a little story, a children's story called How Kind. A story about a, a little a, a chicken, a little hen, and she has an egg, and she goes, and for whatever reason, she gives, the, the, she gives her egg to the pig. And the pig says, wow, how kind. I must do something for someone else. And the pig takes care of the egg, keeps it warm and nice, and then the pig goes and picks some flowers and gives the flowers to the cow. And the cow says, wow, how kind. That pig sure is kind. I need to be more like that. And pays it forward. And the cow goes and gives some milk to a cat. <laughs> and the cat says, wow, that cow sure is kind. I need to do something else for someone else. And the cat goes up to the big bully, the dog, who's always wanting to play rough with a cat. And the cat says, hey, do you want to play? We'll play that favorite game of yours. And they play. And that dog says, wow, that cat sure is kind. And then the dog goes and fetches a stick. And he says, now what should I do with the stick? Oh, I'll go over to Pig. And I'll scratch Pig's back with a stick. And Pig says, oh, that feels so good. Can you get right there too? Oh, how kind, dog. And right then, dog and Pig are... are are enjoying each other's kindness when that egg starts to crack and hatch. And dog says, hey, pig, what are you doing with this egg? And he says, I'm taking care of it, but I don't know why. And out from the egg comes a little 
chick. And they take the chick back to Mother Hen. And Mother Hen says, wow, dog and pig sure are kind. A little story about being how kind. Do not repay evil for evil, but be kind and be generous and let your love be genuine. And ultimately, I think it's pretty difficult, maybe even impossible for us to do. At least on a long time, lifetime basis, we already confessed our sinfulness, saying that we have fall, failed to love our neighbors as ourselves, failed to love God as well. But we do know that God fits all those criteria, that God's love is genuine, that God never repays evil for evil, that God extends hospitality even to us, that God's steadfast love and mercy endure forever. And that God walks with us through the storm. God's song, like a, like a bird, like a lark, will always go with us and encourage us to continue living the best possible lives we can in the name of Jesus Christ, who took up the cross for us and challenges us and invites us to carry the cross and help others. Amen.